Dr. Eric Topol is cardiologist and professor of molecular medicine at Scripps Research, and he joins me now from La Jolla, California. Really good to see you, and I hate to remind you, I'm sure you don't need reminding, you have been tracking this so closely for the better part of two years. What mm -hmm. strikes you about the latest data on this variant? And I will add here that in the United States, Dr. Fauci as well also said that this virus will, in his words, find just about everybody. Well, good to be with you, Paula. Thank you. I think the main thing that we have to keep in mind is while these case counts are horrifying in terms of numbers and transmissibility of this version of the virus like we've never seen, on the good side, this, the countries that have really high vaccination rates and booster rates are holding up pretty darn well. And so, as you mentioned, France, and uh, we've already seen in Denmark, in Norway, the UK, so it's, it's a much better scene there than it is in the U.S. And uh, as this moves east across Europe, there's going to be more trouble because of the lower vaccination rates and much less in terms of the third dose of vaccine. Yeah, and again, it is those low vaccination rates that everyone talks about. You know, a, a few studies out now basically indicate that Omicron likely leads to half as many hospitalizations Far fewer uh, end up in ICU. People are spending less time in hospital as well, which, which is interesting than they did with other variants. I mean, do you think the trajectory of Omicron now is going to be something that should give us some optimism? Could this be a more manageable phase of the pandemic? And if it is, What's your best guess? You know, with Omicron in the driver's seat, is it two months? Is it spring? Is it late spring? Yeah, those are tough questions, uh, Paula. I think there are two things that we're lucky about. One is that the uh, vaccines are holding up. In fact, it's not 50 percent. It's 88 to 90 some percent reduction of hospitalizations with the third shot. So we're lucky because the immune escape of this uh, version of the virus of Omicron is really extensive. The second thing, as you're getting at, is we're going to create a whole lot more uh, immunity throughout the world with this. And that's not going to get us to any sense of end endemic state by itself, but it's going to help us get that way. So I guess what I'd say is if we don't get another version of the virus that's worse than Omicron, hard to be more transmissible, but it could escape our our vaccines more. That would be even more trouble. It could induce more severe disease. Fortunately, it's much less in terms of severity, about 60 to 70 percent less. The problem, of course, it's compensated by five, tenfold more cases. So it's almost like a wash. So that's what we have to look forward to. If we get a lot more immunity and we don't have a variant that turns out to be worse than what we are seeing right now, then we should be moving towards a much better situation. And I want to drill down on that a little bit. You know, the only way to describe this virus, if you ask me, is it's been terrorizing. And I say that because it has humbled and divided even the most brilliant scientists. And case in point, you know, you tweeted today about a very provocative editorial in the Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. And you can see the headline there. It said, slow the spread, speeding it might be safer. safer. Now, this article, just to boil it down to the basics, it argues that slowing the spread of this Omicron variant may create a super variant or doomsday variant in future. You know, I, I kind of want to get your take on this because this kind of goes back to that old fashioned idea. Well, if we all get it, then this pandemic will finally be over. What are the flaws in that thinking? Yeah, it's totally flawed. Um, we uh, to think that we're going to nurture a variant uh, by trying to slow the spread is the opposite of what this is all about. The problem we don't know about yet is the more people who get uh, infected, the more we could be looking at long COVID, you know, this disabling protracted uh, state that can be really a, a problem and has affected large numbers of people throughout the world. So no, this, this editorial was uh, really what I considered reckless. And uh, a lot of reactions have been put out on social media about it. Um, you know, I think the, the essential thing is we don't want to be the sense of inevitability, the sense that we should be having things like chicken pox parties, which was referred to in that uh, piece. These are just completely illogical and not based on any data that shows that suppression of the virus at this point will help containment, not make it worse. 
Uh, we haven't ever achieved containment here in the United States, and hopefully we'll get there someday. Yeah, and you can see, Dr. Topol, that given the debate among doctors and scientists that the rest of us are having a really hard time with this. I will, I'm will. i going to have to leave it there for tonight, uh, Dr. Topol, but um, I, I do want to let everyone know that your Twitter feed is excellent. I have it on notifications, and uh, the studies in there uh, make it abundantly clear where this uh, variant is going on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, Dr. Eric Topol for us in California, thank you. Thank you.